We have started in a series of the topic of false teaching in the church. We have studied many verses that prophesy that there will be an increasing number of false teachers in the end times. Near the time of Jesus' return, many false teachers will worm their ways into churches and cause many to fall away from faith. This great falling away is called the apostasy, and it will happen right before the Antichrist enters the scene. We have talked about two types of false teaching. There is a type of false teaching in the church that comes because of weakness and sin. This type of false teaching hurts the church but does not cause Christians to fall away from saving faith. According to Jesus, this type of false teacher will go to heaven but be called the least in the kingdom. According to Paul, this type of false teacher will go to heaven only as a branch snatched from the fire. This type of teacher cannot expect to receive any reward in heaven. Even though this type of false teaching does not destroy the faith of believers, it is sometimes necessary to separate from it in order to keep unity. Although we can separate from this type of teacher, we should understand that they belong to God and that they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. As I said before, it is quite likely that we ourselves are wrong on some issues and therefore we must live in humility and be willing to listen to those who oppose us. The second type of false teaching comes from hypocritical liars motivated by the spirit of the Antichrist. These men act like servants of God, but are motivated by greed. The teaching of these men will cause people to follow another gospel and another Jesus that cannot bring salvation. Jesus describes these men well in the following verse. Matthew 23 verse 15 Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. It is one thing to preach Jesus and the gospel out of greed. It is quite another to preach a false Jesus and a false gospel. The church must separate itself completely from teachings that lead people to hell. We cannot unite with false teachers of this kind. Last week, we talked about how false teachers will claim to have faith in Jesus. We understood that not everyone who claims to have salvation in Jesus is saved. It is important for us to understand what these teachers say about Jesus. We must understand what they trust in Jesus for. There are many churches that are following another Jesus and another gospel that cannot save them. Today we are going to look at another issue that must be accepted in order for there to be unity. If we are to unite with others, they must accept that all scripture is God's word. The Word of God must be the foundation of any church we unite with. If it is not, we cannot work together. Most false teachers and false churches will rely heavily on teachings of one person. These churches will use the Bible, but will focus more on other books that they have written themselves. False teachers will lay aside the Bible using a variety of methods. These teachers might set themselves up as authorities over the Bible because of their education. The false teacher will use worldly wisdom to teach and yet claim that they hold on to the Word of God. Another way the false teachers lay aside the Word of God is by claiming to have received new revelation. These teachers will lead the church into error by speaking of the dreams and the visions they have received from God. Finally, a false teacher will lead the church to believe that the Bible is full of good teaching and wise words that lead to life. By claiming that the Bible is a good book, they can put their modern wisdom above it 
and lead the church astray. As we have heard many times, many false teachers do not like doctrine and theology. The more people search for truth by studying the Word of God, the more likely they are to find out that they are being misled. For a long time, the Catholic Church did not want its followers to have Bibles and read them. The Word of God was received through the medium of a priest, and often it was only preached in Latin. In this way, the Catholic Church could make up any doctrine, if wanted, without being questioned by its followers. It is common for false teachers to teach that the Bible is not sufficient knowledge for the Church and that new revelation is needed in our time. These teachers will claim that the Bible is outdated and primitive, and that it must be updated with modern science. Listen to what Paul says to Timothy about the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1-3 In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage, with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Paul charges Timothy to preach the word of God with great patience and careful instruction. Paul says that the word of God must be used to correct, rebuke, and encourage. In verse 3, Paul says that the time will come when people will not put up with sound teaching. Instead of listening to the word of God, they will gather a great number of teachers to teach them things they want to hear. False teachers will often claim that the church needs them in order to understand the Word of God. Most false churches are built around one major prophet or teacher. The writing and teaching of this one prophet will be used to translate the Bible. In this way, the words of the teacher become more important than the words of God. The Mormons believe in the teaching of Joseph Smith and the Seventh-day Adventists believe in the teaching of Ellen J. White. The Church of Science base its beliefs on the teaching of Mary Baker Eddy, and the Catholic Church elevates the teaching of the Pope to the level of God's Word. They teach that His teaching are infallible. All of these churches have led people into hell by elevating the teaching of a person over the Word of God. There are a lot of evangelical movements that have become just as bad in the same way. Even the tendency of Bible schools to elevate the teaching of Calvin is a great danger to the church. We must be very weary when we are told that we need new revelation in order to progress in our walk with God. We must be very careful when teachers encourage us to read their books and their publications as a key to understanding the Bible. We must be very careful when a teacher does not allow their followers to listen to other preachers. The Word of God teaches us to listen to teachers and test everything. If we cannot listen to opposing views, how can we ever be corrected for our wrongs? False teachers and false churches want to do the thinking for you. They want to tell you what is good and what is bad. Godly pastors will teach the church to test all teachings, including their own, with the Word of God. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Why did John ask believers to test every spirit and every teaching? The reason why John asks us to do this is because he knows that there are many false prophets in the world. We must be careful of those who claim that a specific translation of the Bible is the only true translation. 
When someone claims that one translation is better than the other, they have become quite arrogant. It is true that there are better translations and that we must seek to understand as best we can what the original text meant. What we must not do is trust translators' work above God. God has written His Word in such a way that it can remain the Word of God despite errors. God knew that His Word would be translated into hundreds of languages. All main doctrines of the Bible can be taught using almost any book of the Bible, and therefore a small error in translation should not lead the Church of God astray. We must be very careful of the translations that are created in order to please a certain group of people. These must be avoided completely because they are created to please men and not God. There are some Bibles that have been printed that are not created to communicate God's Word, but to make God's Word more acceptable. These translations are demonic in nature and should not be used. I do not believe we need to separate from King James-only churches, but I do believe that their focus on one translation is unhealthy. Churches must teach that the Bible is God's Word and draw from it their doctrine and teaching. There is no other book like the Bible. It was the first printed book in the world, and the printing press was invented specifically to print it. It is available in most languages and found everywhere around the world. People have died to have the Bible, and they have died for the truth found in it. The Bible is the most accurate historical book that exists, but it claims to be much more. It claims to be inspired by God Himself. Despite the fact that it is a collection of books from thousands of years of history, and written by many authors of various backgrounds, the Bible is one amazingly coherent story. We do not have time to look into the hundreds of prophecies found in the Bible that were fulfilled. However, these fulfilled prophecies are proof that the writers of the Bible received their words from God Himself. Allow me to mention just one amazing prophecy found in the Bible. 150 years before the ruler of Persia, Cyrus the Great, conquered Babylon, the prophet Isaiah predicted that God would use him. God allowed Cyrus to take over Babylon and through him allowed the Jews to return to Jerusalem. Imagine the surprise of Cyrus the Great to find his name written in prophecy 150 years before his arrival. Listen to what Isaiah said about him. Isaiah 44, verse 24 to 25, and verse 28. This is what the Lord says, Your Redeemer, who formed you in the womb. I am the Lord, the Maker of all things, who stretched out the heavens, who spreads out the earth by myself, who foils the signs of false prophets and makes fools of diviners, who overthrows the learning of the wise and turns it into nonsense who says to Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and will accomplish all that I please. He will say of Jerusalem, Let it be built, and of the temple, let its foundation be laid. Isaiah 45, verse 1-3 This is what the Lord says to His anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of, to subdue nations before Him, and to strip kings of their armor to open doors before him, so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you, and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze, and cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. We cannot learn from anyone who does not accept the Bible as being the Word of God. Some popular teachers of our day claim that the Old Testament was written by primitive men. These arrogant men refuse to accept the Bible as the Word of God, and therefore there can be no unity with them. 
Listen to what Paul says about this subject. Romans 3 verse 2. First of all, the Jews have been entrusted with the very words of God. According to Paul, the Jews had been entrusted with the very words of God. The Jewish scriptures were not just historical records, but were given to them directly by God. The author C.S. Lewis was known to say the following thing about Jesus. Jesus was either a liar or a lunatic or the Lord. Mr. Lewis meant to say that someone who claims to be God must either be completely rejected as a lunatic or accepted as the Lord. The Bible was written in very much the same fashion. The Bible consistently claims to be the Word of God. Because of this claim, there can be but two approaches. You can either accept the claim and believe, or you can reject it completely. Why try to learn from a book you claim is full of lies? Why teach from a book you claim is written by primitive men? We cannot unite with people that take the Bible as a book with a lot of good suggestions in it. Jesus commands us to not only read the Word of God, but to obey it. Listen to the parable given to us by Jesus. Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. Therefore, everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Jesus says that we should build our lives upon his word. Jesus' words are found in the Bible. Jesus says that it is not enough to study his word. We must put them into practice in order to survive the coming storm. Only those who study God's word and put them into practice can find salvation. This world runs on laws such as gravity. Without these laws, there could be no life. The Bible is not a recommendation on how to live. It is not God's suggestion for us on how to live. Those who accept His words and obey them will find life, but those who refuse will die. Rejecting the Bible is rejecting the God of life. Accepting what is written in the Bible is accepting His authority over our lives. It is very important not to make ourselves or anyone else an authority over the Bible. Without the Bible, we would have no foundations for life. There is a reason why the laws of the country must be written down on paper. If laws were not written down, anyone could argue against them, and nobody would know if their arguments were correct. The written law provides a foundation to look back to when in doubt. The Bible gives foundational instructions for life. In the Bible, we can find basic information about simple and complex questions. Why are there seven days in a week? Why is there a day of rest? Why do people get married? Why is a family made up of one man and one woman? Why is there evil in this world? Without laws, the world would descend into chaos. Any game that we play must have rules. If there are no rules to a game, there cannot be fun and joy. False teachers who add to the word of God, making their own rules, bring death to their followers. Let us look at a few verses that describe to us how important the word of God is. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 14 to 17 But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you have learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, 
which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Paul asks Timothy to continue faithfully in following Scripture. He calls Scripture holy and says that it will bring saving faith in Christ Jesus. Paul says that all Scripture comes from God and is to be used for teaching, rebuking, and correcting. He says that Scripture trains people in righteousness. Most importantly, the Apostle teaches that the Word of God can thoroughly equip the servants of God for every good work. False teachers like to claim that the Bible is not sufficient for equipping believers. They proclaim their teaching and knowledge to be key to becoming mature, and in this way they draw people to be their disciples and can exploit them financially. A good teacher will train his flock on how to feed themselves from the Word of God. They will turn their followers into disciples of Jesus, disciples of the truth. Let us understand here that when Paul wrote these words, he was talking about the Old Testament scriptures. According to Paul, even the Old Testament is able to thoroughly equip us. When Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, he said that the stories found in the Old Testament were written down for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. Listen to his words. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11 These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. There is a tendency in many churches to ignore the Old Testament, claiming that it is not relevant. Paul says the exact opposite. He says that these stories are more relevant for those who live near the closing of the age. The stories found in the Old Testament provide a foundation to understand the teaching found in the New Testament. New Testament teaching is more important, and yet, it cannot be separated from the Old Testament foundation. We must be very careful with people who add or take away from Scripture. When someone adds a teaching to the Bible, he is putting himself in authority over Scripture and should not be followed. There are many ways that someone can add to Scripture. They do this by bringing in worldly knowledge. They do this by claiming they have had dreams and visions and they claim to have uncovered new revelations from other sources. Listen to what Paul says about those who add to Scripture. Colossians 2 verse 18 Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual minds. This type of teacher is proud, and instead of teaching from God's Word, they go into great detail about the visions and dreams that they've supposedly received from angels. We must be very careful with people who take away from the Word of God. These people also put themselves in authority over Scripture. There are many ways that these false teachers take away from the Word of God. Some will ignore prophecy by claiming that it is only poetry, and others will teach that historical writings are fictional. A common way in our time to both add and take away from the Word of God is by discounting the account of creation with the so-called science of evolution. With human wisdom, false teachers teach that God used the process of evolution to create the world. But listen to the warning that the Bible gives to everyone at the end of the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, 
God will add to that person the plagues described in the scroll. And if anyone takes words away from the scroll, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in the scroll. Adding and taking away from the word of God is not a small thing in the eyes of God. God says that those who add and take away will suffer the judgment of God as recorded in the book of Revelation. We must be very weary of arrogant teachers. We must separate ourselves from them. Let us finish the study today by reading the words of Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 1 to 10 Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is the coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters, also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and the earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Peter says that we must understand that false prophets will come in the last days and mock the doctrine of the rapture. These teachers no longer believe in the stories of creation, and they no longer believe in the story of the flood found in the Old Testament. And therefore, these teachers no longer believe in the coming rapture of the church and the punishment of the world. When someone does not hold the Bible in high view, they show that the Spirit of God does not live in them. It is only through the Spirit of God that we accept the things that are written in the Bible. Anyone without the Spirit will consider what is written to be foolishness. Do not let such a teacher instruct you. I pray that God will help us stay separate from the multitudes of false teachers of our time. May God guide you and your church. May God bless you, you and your family.